Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's career chat. I'm Krista Harmon, and I welcome Joe Harmon. No relation, but he is an architect here in Grand Rapids. Welcome, Joe. Thank you. Glad to be with you. So we're going to dig into a little bit more about what an architect is. Um, I'm sure there's some you know, general understanding for this particular occupation. But I'd first like to take you back to when you were 16 or 17, Joe. Um, did you think you'd want to grow up to be an architect? What were your thinking back in high school? So I had a lot of interest in kind of the arts um, and then also in math. So I had like kind of a drive to be an artist in some sense and then a drive to be like an engineer in another. Um, so when I was like 17, I was talking with my school counselor and she proposed uh, architecture and becoming an architect. And uh, that's when I kind of just fell in love with the idea. Um, so then after that, it was just kind of a progression of like how to get into the field and uh, find the right school to go to and that. So, but yeah, that was about when I decided I wanted to be an architect. Um, I'm sorry. What do you think she saw in you that she recommended being an architect now that you know what they do? What do you think she was observing about you then? Um, I think... I think she appreciated the uh, desire not to just be a full-blown like artist, um, the kind of desire to, to do something uh, constructive and, and um, uh, developing. Um, and then also like, she's, she didn't really want my math skills to be put to waste. Um, so she was like, you really should find something that, that you get to use math and at least occasionally. So. So you were good in math, and that's obviously uh, part of being an architect. We'll talk more about that. But she saw you as a creative or as, as an artist at some level, too. So those two primary things came together for you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what an architect is then? Okay, yeah. So um, an architect is kind of a all-enveloping kind of um, career path. So we do pretty much anything that involves the building, developing it, designing it. Uh, constructing it. Um, we're involved in like so many facets. Um, very basic level, we do like the design and drawing of the actual construction documents um, that then a contractor will use to actually build the building. Is that computerized now? Is that different than like the old days where it was paper pencil? Do you still do some of that? Uh, we still do some uh, paper and pencil. Uh, officially, I think most municipalities and, and uh, that take computer drawings um, and then just kind of in the modern world, it's so much easier to produce uh, on quantity, um, the kind of computerized drawings, yeah. So let me take you back just a little bit then, um, and we'll definitely dig more into some of your favorite parts about your job and everything, but. So you graduated from high school and you had to go straight off to college. Is it a four-year degree to get in? Tell us about the education path and about yours specifically. So, yeah, so um, generally uh, most undergrads in the state are all four-year uh, for a Bachelor of uh, Architecture. I chose uh, Detroit Mercy because they had an accelerated uh, five-year master's program. Um, so uh, for the job field, it's not required to have a degree. Um, to really get a job in it. Um, but I, most firms kind of prefer uh, experience level of like an undergraduate degree. And then for the state of Michigan, it requires a master's degree to get a, obtain a license uh, to be, be a professional architect. Um, so that's kind of the kind of way that you have to navigate through the education system. Um, so I, yeah, I chose the uh, Detroit Mercy path of a five-year accelerated program because I wanted to kind of jump right into it and uh, I wasn't too scared of not liking it. So what would be some other undergraduate degrees, Joe, that might be a good fit for young people who maybe aren't ready to dive into that as a full commitment, knowing that they're gonna have to get their master's to get that professional architect license, give them some ideas of the range of things. Yes, so I mean, like there's uh, degrees in like drafting and, um, I mean, just design and interior design, um, kind of all of those fields kind of correlate to architecture. Um, I know of a few people that have uh, undergrad degrees in just general kind of uh, art and uh, general design. 
um, and then they went back to school uh, for their master's in architecture. So. That's great. And one thing that you said, you just kind of breeze by, but you said you don't necessarily have to have a degree to get into architecture. Tell us some of those other roles that are around you that, that you're referring to. Yeah, so um, there's there's people that are involved uh, where I work at uh, Fishbeck that um, their jobs are marketing support um, and like chasing after proposals and, uh, and new, new jobs and new work. Um, and they don't necessarily have degrees in architecture. Um, and their job isn't necessarily design. Um, it's design oriented. They have an opinion and all that, but uh, yeah, they don't necessarily have a degree in architecture. Along with, um, there's people that work um, as technicians in that, and they have, uh, they work on the computer animated uh, software and, and do drawings in that, but they don't necessarily have degrees. They just uh, have like, like developed and, and became proficient on, on the computer. Yeah, that's so great for young people to hear, Joe, that there's some different avenues and with so much software that young people can access to kind of learn on their own. Sounds mm -hmm. like that's one way into somewhere like Fishback where they can um, have a role as a technician. What are some of the software um, platforms that you use there and are any of them that you know about free that students could start to put in the other room as high school students? Yeah, so uh, we use... Uh whole like sort of um, software. So we use uh, the Autodesk suite. So uh, Autodesk produces a lot of technical drawing platforms. So Revit and AutoCAD. Um, and so that, that software, we get a lot of our actual uh, construction documents from. Um, I know that they offer some free student or discounted student softwares. Another great one that we use a lot for kind of beginning design and rendering uh, is SketchUp. Um, it, it's uh, a Google subsidy and they for sure offer student um, free trials and such. And that one's really fun and very into it, uh, intuitive. You just kind of jump in and start clicking around your mouse and you'll have a building drawn up in, <laughs> in a few minutes. So. And I just want to take you back again to your younger years because I, I have this kind of myth um, or stereotypal architects, were you one that used to doodle and draft, you know, pictures or not? I, I used to, I used to draw a lot and that was in kind of my art kind of sense. Um, I used to enjoy drawing kind of buildings and structures. I, I enjoy like kind of the look of arches and that kind of thing. Um, but I can't say that I was, I was drafting floor plans by any means when I was a kid or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I've, I've always been drawn to kind of the visual arts, um, so. Yeah, so I was, you know, encouraging young people to kind of look at the kind of games they play, the kind of activities they did as a child. You know, sometimes there's clues there, um, but it sounds like you were always attracted to, like you say, the art, archways or architecture in general. So young right. people, as you're listening to this, you know, start to think, you know, oh, I, I do notice that I'm really attracted to that or not so much. Um, so you graduate, you have your degree, a master's in five years. Um, did you get a job right out of college? Was that an easy transition or did you have to go bartend somewhere for a while? So, yeah, so in my, in my college uh, program, they actually required internships. Um, so I worked through school a bit. Um, so when I was nearing graduation, I was looking for more of a full-time role in that and um, so I put my application on a few a uh, few areas of, of Michigan and and landed one over here and uh, accepted that offer here at Fishbeck and took it kind of or started kind of right out of college. So um, it was kind of a quick transition. <laughs> but um, he, when I since I've been here, they've been really like kind of great at working with me and developing my skills and really kind of progressing me. I'm I'm just under four years in the profession and I'm licensed and so yeah. And I, I just love that you shared that because I think it's well, a couple of things I want to dig out of that. Um, I want to talk more about your internship. But I think for a lot of young people, they're not, they don't, they're not aware that you don't learn everything in college, that it's just like some base knowledge and then you really start to develop as a professional. So just kind of share some more information about that transition and, and really what you do when you graduate about really what you picked up over the last four years. Yeah, so I mean like, College does its best to kind of teach you concepts of like what the profession is um, and like how to kind of be a professional. 
Um, but a lot of it's, yeah, you have to be in it to really learn it. Um, so yeah, like that transition, to me, it wasn't very complicated. It was very much like um, encouraged through um, the kind of professional development that I've received at Fishbeck. Um, and so that kind of transition of like learning, learning new skills and seeing how um, the like true profession works has been just a kind of development of um, me getting kind of small amounts of work and slowly building up to being able to do more and more on my own and then um, kind of transitioning that into um, me kind of leading my own project and that's in that sense so it's been just a slow kind of trickle of of leaning on me more and more for being a, a worker i think that's great for young people to hear Joe, that um that you learn on the job and that there are bosses out there who are expecting to build buildings right out of college you know that there are things you have to learn and and grow in that internship, young people like to know, you know, how does that even work? Do you, did you have to go find your own internship? Is this something that the college helped you find? Tell us more about that. Yeah, so my university um, was pretty willing to help. Um, so we, they reach out to alumni of the program and, and kind of put a feeler out for a lot of the students to help find work. Um, also being based in Detroit, there are a lot of architectural firms around, around town. Um, and they're always looking to uh, hire younger staff and help develop them. So um, it was kind of a mix of both. The school was helping, and then also it was on my own looking for jobs. That's great. And was it paid? Should students expect paid internships in this field? Yes, uh, so you should expect a paid internship. Um, my school actually required it to count it as a credit. Uh, it had to be paid and you had to actually prove that. Um, there were certain exceptions. Um, uh, we had a, I had a classmate that took a job for a uh, very world-renowned famous architect and to work for their firm, they weren't offering a, a, a stipend. So he had to get special privileges to take a non-paid uh, job. So. That's really yeah. interesting that your school expects it to be paid. And that's great yeah. that the local employers who are bringing interns on, because obviously college students have bills to pay. So you need to be earning money. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad to hear that. Um, so you but you started right out of college um, and you got this fantastic job. You know, that's every parent's dream is that their kid graduates, goes right into a job. Um, tell us about some of those jobs that you have been, what kind of buildings are you building? Tell us about what some of your favorite projects have been. Yeah, so I've been lucky uh, at Fishbeck to really touch a whole assortment of buildings. Um, I've, I've worked on um, everything from like a bank to a movie theater to a, a parking structure and, and so on. And um, so a couple of cool ones, I worked on a hospital that finished up last summer in design. And that was a really interesting one for the complexity in that of, of a hospital system. Um, and just kind of seeing how all of that comes together and working with um, the client themselves. Uh, Another one right now, I'm working on a, a restoration of a office tower in, in downtown Jackson. And that one's cool just because of it. it's a historic building. And so having the nature of, of this old kind of entity of the community and then getting to restore it and build something new that uh, a company will get to use and, and work out of. Yeah, so you were giving some examples of different types of projects you've had, Joe. I guess I would love for you to help Kind of help us understand the landscape out there. Um, are there companies that only do hospitals or only do schools? I mean, do people specialize? Help young people understand the different types of opportunities. Right. So yeah, there there's uh, it's a huge kind of market. So there are a lot of firms that do primarily residential work. There are firms that do primarily commercial uh, and industrial work. Um, there are some, some firms that specialize in kind of niche markets like school and hospital design. Uh, here at Fishbeck, we kind of cover the whole array. Um, we're kind of open to uh, everything from hospitals and higher ed to uh, retail chain buildings, and then also kind of uh, municipality work and all that. So it, it, it varies firm to firm. But um, there's, there's always those kind of small players in the market that are very niche, 
Um, and then there's the big guys that take on every type of project. And you mentioned something up one of your crew projects is more of that historical type of architecture. And that's a whole niche, right? So if you happen to love history and you like architecture, those things can come together. Did oh, you yeah. um, have certain classes in college about that? Or how do people branch off onto that, that direction? Yeah, so yeah, historical preservation and uh, working on historic structures or just old buildings is a very niche market in, in architecture. Um, in college, I did take a few courses on uh, historic preservation and that, and um, it's, it's a big process because they want the integrity of history to be maintained. Um, so like building methods and all that, you study a lot of that as much as you're studying how the building looks. Um, so it's very cool. I, I do have an interest in it, um, but it is <laughs> a very technical and uh, integrated kind of niche market. So maybe down the road, I might find myself in that job, but right now I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. Oh, that's great. And that kind of brings up kind of my next question. You know, when you look at the future of architects, um, the field, you know, what's adjusting since you even were a high school student? Where, where do you see this occupation going? Anything you'd like the young people to know? Uh, yeah, so I mean, like, if anything, it's, it's, uh, it's not going anywhere. Um, like, it's not going away. Computers aren't going to replace us. Um, <laughs> as long as, like, kind of we're using buildings, we're going to be designing buildings. Um, the kind of way I see the progression growing is just more and more of an integrated process. So we're like, we're seeing a lot more now where um, we're working with the owner and the contractor from the very beginning, from the very dream of the project um, and, and taking that all the way through until the building is completely built. Um, so if anything, that's kind of the progression that I'm seeing is in the next few years, it's, it's going to be such a collaborative uh, community of, of constructors and um, architects and engineers. And for students that might have an interest in sustainability, Joe, how does sustainability integrate with architecture? Yeah, so um, I can go on a whole tyrant about <laughs> um, sustainability and buildings. Um, so like we, uh, buildings make up so much of our carbon footprint. So it's really important for us to kind of keep in mind as the designers of these buildings to be sustainable, to like be environmentally conscious of our, of our buildings and our designs. So uh, we're kind of at like that leading edge of uh, being the sustainable members of the community. Like we need to kind of um, push that design forward so then it helps better the communities and, and create a greener earth. Do people specialize in sustainability Architects, is that, a, is that a field? Yep, yep. So we, there's specialization in it. And then also we do a lot with, uh, with varying consultants. Um, a lot of the green initiative and sustainability programs involve a lot of kind of uh, paperwork and, and uh, planning in that. Um, so a lot of uh, non-architects as well um, are involved in that process of, of determining what is sustainable and what is not and uh, and officiating that kind of um, program and, and building. Um, you know, you probably meet people like, oh, you're an architect. What assumptions do people make about architects that you'd like to clear the air? This, that's just not true. Or some things that maybe people don't know about your career that you want them to know. Yeah, we're, we're always like are portrayed as these like really cool people and and like, we're so much better than everyone else and all that, but it's, we're just normal people. Um, we're uh, just as normal as everyone else. Our job is, is a normal eight to five, like, hey, like we show up, we do our work and we go home and we have normal lives. <laughs> we aren't these, these crazy um, kind of eccentric, whatever, walking around with our drawings into every restaurant and bar that you see and all that. So we are, we're just normal. Um, as for kind of uh, like, I don't know, I guess that kind of answered your question, right? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I guess I'm just wondering if there's anything that you want them to know. And maybe this will lead into really this question of, you know, what's your favorite part? And what's yeah. your least favorite part about your job? So my favorite part, um, I would say is like kind of being collaborative on the design and like really seeing the design develop and um, 
and see it through. Um, so well, oftentimes in a project, like uh, you come up with a concept and like early schematic drawings and stuff. And then as the building progresses, you have to implement uh, actual things like the structure and that into it. And sometimes that, that design gets altered. Um, so I like to kind of work through the entire process and try and keep that original design as intact as possible. Um, as for the part that I, I guess I don't like that much is uh, sometimes it can just be a little, the uh, putting together drawings and that can be a little tedious. Um, and you can get a lot of like kind of similar uh, drawings in that. So it can be a little straining in that sense. Yeah, that's, that's helpful to kind of spell that out for, for everyone. Um, Kendra's kind of wondering, you know, she's kind of discerning in the STEM fields, you know, what would you say is the primary difference between engineers and architects? Um, the primary difference is, uh, as much as I've talked about math and knowing how to do math, is we really don't do a ton of math, whereas engineering, that's their, their backbone, is they they crunch the numbers and make sure the building's gonna work the way that they're designing it. Yeah, and so um, I will be giving you a resource counter too where you can do a little more investigation and really start to compare and contrast to try to find the one that's the best fit for you. But thank you for that, Joe. Um, you mentioned collaborative you know, collaboration and you love the problem solving of trying to keep that original design intact. Um, young people are learning about soft skills while they're in high school, that, that communication, that teamwork. Um, mm -hmm. Give us some other examples of how that stuff kind of plays out in the real world, communication. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I work um, on projects. We work with a bunch of different uh, engineering fields um, to put a full building together. So being able to communicate uh, to team members is huge. It's very important that we can like talk through things and, and figure out what we need uh, and what they need. Um, so that soft skill of communication is really good. Uh, I would say another one is is being able to be kind of um, uh, detail oriented, uh, and then another one would be like kind of a time management and like being kind of self organized. Um, this field can get pretty complex, and the more that you can kind of organize your your thoughts and and your your kind of duties, uh, I think the more prepared you can be for your job. I appreciate you helping um, young people kind of make the connection of what they're learning in school and why it's important to hear from someone like you, you know, kind of starts to help connect the dots for them of why they need to do those team projects when it probably annoys them. Did you like team projects growing up or did it annoy you? Oh, I mean, like it, it always depended on the team. If, if I had my friends on the team, it'd be a great project, but if it was somebody I didn't hang out with, then maybe not, but yeah, yeah. I think Okay. Yeah, the teachers are trying to teach you, right? That you had to learn to collaborate with other people that you didn't know or didn't like or maybe weren't friends with, right? Completely. <laughs> so you mentioned that um, there's different engineers that you start to partner with. So why don't you give us just kind of an example of who's in your building? So you have architects. Give us some examples of those different types of engineers. We know that you have technicians. Are they called architecture ar technicians or what are they called? So, so uh, a technician in kind of the job field varies. Um, so like an architectural technician is somebody that's probably uh, just not licensed uh, in architecture, but they're doing architectural drawings. Um, as for all the other engineers, so we, I, we work with civil engineering, uh, structural engineering, um, mechanical and plumbing engineering. Uh, I mean, those are kind of the base ones that I work with. Most of the time, uh, we also have like process engineering, so uh, water supply and wastewater uh, treatment. Um, and then there's uh, surveyors and landscape architects. Um, we have a bunch of consultants that we do with like uh, lighting design and sound design and, um, and technology like design, like running your computer wires and, and all of that. So there's a, a huge range that we're involved with as architects um, because it's, it's the whole building. Like there's a lot of things that go into a building that I think a lot of people don't always realize. And so um, basically every engineer that needs to engineer it will interact with <laughs> on our end. And that's the thing, so many of these jobs, you just don't know 
yet that they exist, right? So no one, most 16 year olds aren't saying, I'm going to grow up to be a lighting engineer. Or I'm going to grow up to be a sound engineer because you just don't know yet. So that's where part of this journey, um, you know, happens. That's when you start to learn about different things and your, your career path can kind of start to meander. You mentioned that historical architecture maybe is, uh, you know, it's a strong interest. Um, you like where you are right now, but maybe down the road. Um, what are some other things as we, you know, we have about two or three minutes left, Joe, that as you look ahead for your future, because you're a young guy, um, that you could see yourself maybe getting into a niche. Anything besides or the historical side? Yeah, so uh, I have a, a big desire to be involved with like building and closure. Um, so like obviously the skin of the building is, is one of the most important parts of the building. Um, it, it's the sustainable part. It's the uh, part that keeps the cold out in the winter um, and all that. So the development and science behind that, that's a very niche market right now. And so um, that's something I'm working towards actively to kind of be more involved and more uh, kind of knowledgeable in. Um, so that for me, it, it involves like getting credentialed um, and getting like attending seminars and, and building that education of mine. I think that's exciting first, you know, to know that your, your field has areas for growth. Um, and so you never just stop learning, right? There's always things changing right. and learning. Yep. And uh, an important little add um, is our professional license. Uh, it, it requires uh, continuing education. So we're always kind of, um, we're always attending our, our little lunch and learns and like little um, lectures about new technologies and new design uh, techniques and all that. So it's always, we're never slowing down on the learning end. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, my final question, and I'm going to switch over to show them a great resource they could use for research. What kind of internships, job shadows, what kind of opportunities do you have for young people? Um, so here at Fishbeck, we, we offer uh, internships for um, those pursuing the profession and then also those that are recent grads um, in, in architecture. We also do a lot of job shadows. So uh, since we have so many engineers and other job fields uh, in-house, we kind of allow uh, people to kind of jump around to a couple different engineers or an architect and kind of just see our day to day. So. Fantastic. So I'm gonna share a screen um, as you, as we finish up, Joe, think about a final word of wisdom to these young people who are exploring careers right now. But I did okay. want to show them a resource where they can dig in just a little further if they're excited about what they're hearing and they're, they want to know if this is the right fit. Um, Own It Online is a fantastic career research site, everyone. Um, up in that right-hand corner, you can put in architect and it will give you some more information that you can use to discern if this is the right thing. Um, when I put in architect, not only is it architect I can learn more about, uh, the wages, what a typical day is like, what the skills are, all that. But it also starts to give us some other um, occupational titles that maybe you weren't aware of. And it's just a great thing to start to explore. You know, what is the difference between a landscape architect um, and maybe the civil drafters in architecture, you know, the database architects, what's that about? So use this kind of tool to click on, learn about, see what might fit you. Because again, you don't know what you don't know. And these, um, kind of occupations. I love this website because it really does help us explore. So that's ONET online. Um, I want to give you my email again, everybody. If you want to follow up with Joe and have any questions, send those to me, Krista Harmon at kentisd.org, and I'll be sure to forward those on to him. Um, if you are interested in a job shadow at Fishbeck, um, that's the name of his company. You can contact them directly. Just Google it, Fishbook, Fishbeck. I'll put that in the chat and they'll help you set up a job shadow. And is that going on right now, Joe, with COVID for you guys? Um, yeah, I think it varies, uh, I guess, which office and that stuff, but uh, we can we can always talk more about it if, if people are interested and kind of work it out. Um, obviously with, with everything going on, it's tough to, to give it uh, for sure on that, but uh, right. it's always an option. So yeah, that's fair. And we'll keep doing these career chats to help young people explore. Um, did you have a final word of wisdom as we finish yeah, up? So I would just recommend uh, if anybody's interested in this kind of field, just like kind of just jump right into it. Um, if your high school offers that drafting course or computer software course of any sort, or just um, any type of building opportunities, uh, 
I just jump right into it and you'll figure out if you like it or not. Um, and if you like it, it's a, it's a really great profession to work in. Well, we're thrilled that you shared your valuable time with us today, Joe, and giving young people insights into the field of architecture. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. I enjoyed doing it. I hope you all kind of took something from it. I'm sure they did.